I know when you hear an organ, you feel like you have to stand up, but you don't. This is just the prelude. You're welcome to stand up, but it's going to be a bit.
Okay, now you can stand up. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread through Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading a portion of Psalm 118 responsively. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. The Lord has punished me sorely. Open for me the gates of righteousness. This is the gate of the Lord. I will give thanks to you for you answered me. The same stone which the builders rejected. This is the Lord's doing. On this day, the Lord has acted. A lesson from 1 Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the 12. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. 
Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Hey, Doug, they're coming. <laughs> Easter's full of surprises. We're just trying to. Two hours ago, we got to be a bunch of animals. <laughs> the Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so they might go and anoint the body of Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Talk about full of surprises. I feel like the Gospel of Mark, which we basically just heard the end of, has kind of a surprise ending. You know, like when you're in a movie theater. Remember movie theaters? <laughs> <laughs> when you're in a movie theater and the lights come on and you're like, wait, that's the end? That, this is over? That can't, po they're just gonna leave us right there? You know, it's like they were filled with terror and amazement. And they went out and told no one because they were afraid. Excellent, happy East. Wait, what? They didn't tell anyone? They were afraid? What are we doing here then? Like, how, how, how did all of this come to be? Early on the first morning, the women rose to go and prepare a body for burial. I don't know if you've ever been a part of preparing a body for burial or been to see someone you love who has died before they're buried, but it's not exactly the kind of thing that makes you want to go hunting for Easter eggs. And I think in a typical year, that's one of the things we don't understand about Easter. We, we're ready for the Easter egg hunt, but we forget this place that those women were in when they woke up at the crack of dawn to go and prepare the body of someone they love to be buried. But this year, of course, is different because this year was different. 
This year, we all had an experience of loss, of despair, a collective struggle. And people lost their jobs and their businesses and the people that they loved. People had to wait. Some are still waiting to see and visit the people that they love who live far away from them. People had to go to movie theaters all by themselves with a mask on and then no one else was, and, or worse, watch a movie from your own home where let's just face it, the popcorn is not as good. And I know there's a difference between losing someone you love and having to make, eat popcorn you made yourself. But suffice to say, I feel like after uh, this last year, all of us have a better understanding than we might have before of what it is to get up at the crack of dawn to do what has to be done. Even if you don't feel like doing it anymore. Even if you really, really don't feel like doing it anymore because can't this be over? And can't we just move on to the part where we're happy and everything's normal again? Even if you're sure that what you have to do next is gonna be the hardest part of all. That's where those women were on Easter morning. And that's where God met them. Not just on a bad day, like on the baddest day, right? In their deepest place of despair, God met them with life and love and hope. And they were terrified. Why do you think that might be? Do you think they just got stuck in the despair, you know? You ever get there? It's like, well, I see that Jesus has risen from the dead, but this, this tomb is very cold and dark. And also, I put a lot of work into preparing these spices. I can't believe you'd be so inconsiderate as to leave before we had anointed him. Sometimes we're just so stuck in one story, we can't tell ourselves another one. But of course, maybe it was just too good. Like they just, they couldn't even believe it. They were overwhelmed, terrified, and amazed, right, is what it says. Those things kind of go together sometimes. Maybe they figured... If they did tell anybody, nobody would believe them. But of course they did believe them, because here we are. I mean, we can assume that Jesus kept his promise, that he went and told Peter and all those other people that Paul likes to list. I feel like Paul's the kind of guy like he would have had a sign in, you know, like, have you seen the resurrected Jesus? Write your name here. I'm trying to keep a count of everybody. 300 people, what does he say? Anyway, it wasn't his only time to show up, so maybe that's it. But I think there's more to it than that. I think people believe this story because, because we know this story, because we've seen this story. We've seen it in our lives, we've lived this story. Because as rough as this last year was, we also saw that resurrection. We saw the way that light comes out of darkness and life comes out of death. We saw people rallying to get pizza and sandwiches and make masks for first responders. We've made connections with people. How many of you talked to somebody in the last year that you had not talked to for years, right? Everybody came out of the woodwork, college friends and high school friends and long lost connections. We found new passions, new interests. We reconnected with what was most important to us. When we woke up at the crack of dawn, when what is in fact the darkest, coldest part of the night, and we went to meet death, God met us with life. Because that's what God does. Because that's who God is. I don't think it's resurrection that scared them so much. I mean, it's, it's scary. <laughs> I get that. It's hard to believe. But we lived it, right? So we know it's true. The scariest part is what do you do next? What do you do then? Right, what if life is not miserable, but in fact, it's a gift, a miracle that keeps happening over and over again? What if in every place of despair and sadness, God is there waiting and working to bring life and hope? What if death is not the end? What if hope and love and life rise again and again. What are we supposed to do then?
See, I don't think Mark meant to have a surprise ending. I think it's more like a to be continued or um, what are those things called? Choose your own adventure. They don't really make choose your own adventure movies. I don't know how you would do that. But, but the thing is our lives are a choose your own adventure, right? And Easter is not the end of the story. It's the beginning of the story or the beginning again. We get to decide what we do with the rest of this life. We get to decide, are we going to look for the signs of hope and joy in life? Or are we going to be consumed by the stories of fear and despair and crushed by those things that are holding us back? Your life is to be continued. That is one of the promises of resurrection. That no matter how dark it gets, no matter how sad it is, no matter how hard, God will meet you and turn darkness and death into light and life. You will rise again. We will rise again. Not just on the great last day, every day, today, tomorrow, every day that we choose to join with God in the work of life and love that, that God is doing. Today we celebrate that Christ has risen from the dead. But we're a part of that. We get to be a part of that. So let us rise up rejoicing and celebrate the good news of the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Hallelujah. Please rise and join me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Kim, our bishop. For all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. And please feel free to offer your intentions, either silently or aloud. Ask your prayers for all those who are on our parish prayer list.
Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And again, please feel free to offer your thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. I offer thanks for all the children and youth in our congregation, for the, those who were able to hunt for eggs and those who helped hide them, and for all the people who work with our children and youth. For our police, firefighters, and first responders, We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Please feel free to mention your loved ones, either silently or aloud. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's greet one another with a socially distanced sign of peace. Peace, peace. This is the new sign of the cross. Peace. Maybe B for vaccinated. No. Somebody told me that. I mean, you're welcome to stay back with us. Communion, it's time for communion. So. Let us ascribe to God the honor due God's name and bring offerings and come into God's courts with praise and thanksgiving.
Please rise as you are able and join with me in the great thanksgiving. I want to remind you this is God's table and God makes a place for all people. So wherever you are in your journey, all are welcome here. If you're joining us via Zoom, we will be available after church to distribute communion and say happy Easter. So feel free to drive by. We'd love to see you. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We turn to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come. We offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with St. Stephen and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation the feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Whoever eats this bread will live forever.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth into the people, renewed, forgiven, healed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ the Savior. Amen. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. Amen. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. Amen. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. Amen. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. And the blessing of God who creates, redeems, and sanctifies be upon you in all you love and pray for this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.